fields and Shenyol's conjecture. Okay, thank you very much for this invitation. I'm sorry I could not be there, but it's an honor, especially to speak after Alex. This is uh, very much related to the work of, uh, of Alex and I'm borrowing many of his uh, ideas. And uh, so this is work in progress with Marcello Mamino, who is in Pisa with me. Um, and uh, let me just start. Uh, so I'm trying to uh, ex work on a, on a certain conjecture and we'll tell you what, what it is exactly. Um, so, um, okay, so I, I write R for uh, the ordered field of real numbers as considered as a structure in the language of ordered rings. Then we may consider the usual structure R exp, which is just uh, the reals with the exponential function added on it, exponential function to the natural base E. And then we also have uh, um, the restricted, what I call restricted exponentiation is not really restricted exponentiation in the usual sense, namely is not uh, exponentiation restricted to zero one, but it's rather this uh, related function, which has already been considered by Alex, which is by definable with the restricted exponentiation. So it's essentially the same, but this, this one is slightly more convenient because it's a smooth function every, everywhere. So, um, if you if you make a picture of it, it looks like a bell bell shaped uh, function, which takes it's a, similar to the Gaussian function. It takes values between one and e, right? When x goes to infinity, it uh, goes to one, and then when x goes to when when x is zero, it's e. Uh, so from this function, you can recover easily the exponential function restricted to any compact interval minus n n if you if you if you want uh, this is just a slightly more convenient because it's a smooth everywhere and, and now on the reals these two functions can be characterized by uh, the differential equations they satisfy so we have the usual differential equation for exponentiation and for restricted exponentiation, you just apply the chain rule to find the derivative, and you get uh, that uh, restricted exp, uh, the derivative of a restricted exp is minus 2x over 1 plus x squared square times the function itself. And then I have to give you the initial condition, and I give you the initial condition in this funny way. So the limit for x tending to infinity is 1, and the reason I do that is that in this way I'm able to state to 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 express these differential equations in the language of uh, ordered rings together with the symbol for uh, restricted exponentiation. If I choose another uh, initial condition, maybe I need a constant for e. If I choose zero as an initial condition, but this is as well is good is good enough. So I have, uh, I, so from now on, I call this restricted exponential function. Although, as I said, it's not really the restriction to, uh, to zero one, but it's, uh, it's related to it and it's uh, interdefinable. Okay, then uh, as everybody knows, it's a big open problem uh, of Tarski, whether uh, R X as a decidable first order theory and McIntyre and Wilkie proved this conditionally assuming Chanel's conjecture. And uh, um, an, an equivalent way to express the decidability of a theory is uh, to, uh, a complete theory is decidable if and only if it is recursively axiomatizable. So the problem is to find a recursive set of axioms and the most natural axioms that one could uh, think of uh, is just uh, uh, given by uh, the formulas for uh, the differential equations together with uh, uh, definable completeness. So you have a real uh, 
a real closed field with uh, this uh, exponential function and the differential equation, and you just say it's definably complete. This is just the first order version of the second order characterization of this function. So you expect that this is a, should be a good uh, candidate for uh, a complete theory. And uh, um, let's see what, uh, what, has, what is already known. Of course, uh, everything is based on the famous paper of Wilkie that uh, the theory of uh, both theory of global exp and restricted exp are ominimal and model complete. There are two proofs of ominimality. One is based on model completeness and the other is based on uh, uh, the ominimality of uh, uh, Pfaffian functions. And then um, there is a, a paper, uh, an extended abstract of Resser I, 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 the dates refer to the publication dates, but Wilkie's result comes before. Uh, the, the, the research says that uh, the global exp, the theory of the global exp is decidable modulo the theory of the restricted exp in the sense that there is, and more precisely, there is a, a recursive list of axioms, actually a very easy list that I will later explain which together with the full uh, complete theory of the restricted exp gives you the complete theory of the global exp. So the problem of the setability is reduced to the problem of uh, the, the setability of the restricted exponential function. Then there is the conditional result of uh, McIntyre and Wilkie that I mentioned before. So we have that uh, the restricted exp, the theory of restricted exp is effectively model complete. So not only is model complete, but given a formula, there is a computable way of finding uh, a formula, uh, an existential formula equivalent to it. The global exp is decidable modulo the existential theory, its existential theory. And the existential theory in turn is decidable modulo Shannon's conjecture. So if you assume Shannon's conjecture, everything is decidable. You first decide the existential part. And from this, you decide the global exp. And then, then a fortiori, you also have the decidability of the restricted exp. And of course, if a complete theory is model complete and decidable is also effectively model complete. Then there are uh, uh, results of uh, Gabrielov and uh, Berarducci Servi, which says that uh, the global exp is effectively or minimal. It's still not known whether it's effectively model complete and conditionally, I believe, but it's, um, but it's effectively or minimal in the sense that given a formula, there is a computable upper bound on the number of connected components of the set defined by that formula. And this immediately gives you a recursive sub theory such that every model is minimal. In the recursive sub theory, you just uh, st state an axiom scheme uh, giving the upper bounds on the number of components for each, for each formula. Uh, okay, so there are there are some steps towards the setability. And now uh, let me define an exp field. An exp field is an ordered exponential field satisfying the differential equation for the global exp. Then similarly, you could define a restricted exp field. Uh, in, in a similar way. Now there is uh, some beautiful results of uh, Fornasiero and Servi and Hieronymi, this, which says that uh, probably is not so well known in this form, but as a consequence of the of their results is that uh, the definably complete exp fields are ominimal. 
So maybe this needs some comments because it's not really literally stated in this form. So for Nasir and Servi worked in more in a more general setting uh, with Pfaffian functions rather than just uh, exponentiation. And what they prove is that uh, if you have a theory of uh, definably complete Pfaffian functions, but then they also need uh, an axiom scheme which is uh, the, which expresses the bare property. So definable completeness in their paper is not enough. They also need the bare property in the sense that uh, definable version of the bare property in the sense that if the domain of the structure is a definable in, in union, uh, cannot be a definable union of uh, nowhere dense definable sets, something like this. Uh, in this setting, they prove uh, minimality. Then Euronymy uh, managed to uh, show that uh, uh, the Bayer property actually follows from definable completeness. So you get the result in the form that uh, I stated. So definably complete exp fields are minimal. So this is, is a good uh, uh, indication of. Uh, a base for uh, the, the conjecture that uh, it may, may be the complete theory of uh, Rx is just given by uh, definably complete X fields. So fields which satisfies the differential equation for X plus the, axio the, 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 the scheme of definable completeness. This would be the most natural axiomatization if it were, uh, you know, true. Um, um, okay, so uh, what uh, um, an, an, an easy remark is that uh, from the finable completeness, you can uh, prove the research axioms that I mentioned before, namely the axioms which together with uh, the complete theory of restricted exp give you the global theory, the, the theory of global exp. So just from the different the differential equation plus definable completeness, for instance, allows you to prove that exp of x plus y equal x of x times x of y. Then exp is increasing. And also then you have a growth axiom namely uh, an, an axiom saying that uh, essentially x grows faster than any polynomial. This is more precise than that. Um, and then uh, uh, finally, the existence of logarithms. So x is surjective on, onto the positive numbers. So everything can be proved uh, easily from definable completeness and the differential equations. Um, so together with then by Reser theorem, together with the theory of restricted X, you get the, 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 the complete theory of full X. Now, um, the growth property is equivalent in this, under the other assumptions, to an, a single axiom saying that uh, X of uh, X plus one is bigger or equal than X. No, and the other way around x of x is greater or equal than one plus x. So you, it, so the research axioms are, are really just five axioms. It's not an infinite list. Uh, it can be proved that definable completeness is essential here. It's not enough to have an x field expanding a real closed field. The problem is, I mean, even, uh, the growth axiom may fail even if all the other properties are true. Uh, indeed, uh, in a paper with uh, Matusinski, Salma Kuhlman, and Vincenzo Mantova, we produced a big variety of uh, exponential fields where the growth axiom fails. And actually, one shows that in that variety, either either you get a model of the exp or uh, it's not even o minimal. 
so or minimality is equivalent to um, the growth for the growth axiom it's essential to have a minimality or equivalently definable completeness so put together with the reserve theorem now takes the following form that the theory of global exp is is given by the theory of the family complete exponential fields plus the theory of restricted exp okay now what comes next uh, we are trying now to see uh, how much one can uh, get from here and to this aim one study we study the residue field so we take a model of our uh, theory of the finably complete x fields and x now the residue field as an induced exponential map recall that by fornasiero Servi and uh, Hieronymi, this is o minimal. You get, an, it's well known that in the o minimal setting, you have this uh, fact that uh, the residue field has an induced exponential map. Then uh, there is an observation of Krapp that uh, this residue field that uh, you obtain uh, is an elementary substructure of the actual Rxp. For simplicity, we assume that we work with saturated uh, models. So the residue field is actually isomorphic to R exp. The problem, however, is whether R exp embeds into the original structure. Or, uh, in other words, whether a minimal exp field is as an Archimedean submodel, and in particular, if the residue structure is embeds into it. Um, oh, I didn't, I forgot to say that the advantage of definable completeness versus O minimality, although they are equivalent a posteriori, is that definable completeness is a recursive set of axioms, while O minimality a priori is not. So it's better to work with definable completeness. So the question is whether we can embed our exp into our O minimal structure. And for this, we need to assume Schanel's conjecture. So assume Schanel's conjecture, you get, uh, you have your uh, O minimal exponential field saturated for simplicity. And uh, you have the corresponding uh, also restricted uh, exponential uh, function, the Bell function that I mentioned before. So the, 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 the result is that uh, there is indeed an embedding uh, of R exp into your minimal structure. And moreover, if you put yourself in the restricted language, in the language of restricted exponential fields, you have that uh, the reals with the restricted x is existentially closed in your O minimal structure with the existential x. So it's uh, almost what we want. Uh, the conjecture would be that uh, you get an elementary substructure, not only existentially closed. If you manage to prove that uh, the restricted X, that, that you get an elementary substructure, this would uh, settle the original, the, the, the main conjecture, namely that uh, the global, uh, the, the theory of global X, the complete theory of global X is, is given by the definably complete X fields, assuming Schoner's conjecture. I mean, assuming Schoner's conjecture, which something that one needs to do uh, unless one uh, solves major open problems. Uh, why this suffices? Because of results that I mentioned before, that uh, 
the theory of, of global exp reduces to the theory of uh, restricted x plus a few axioms. And uh, the, this conjecture that I state settles the theory of restricted exp. So this is where we have uh, where we are so far. We have this embedding of our exp, and we have that the restricted exp is an existentially closed substructure of your O minimal exp field. Okay, so let me make uh, some comments of this. I mean, the ideas of the proof use many of the ingredients developed by Alex Wilkin is big uh, result. So the strategy is the following. So you start with a definably complete X field. Step one, you use Shanwell's conjecture to show that the prime model of uh, uh, the exp, the complete theory, admits a unique embedding into the minimal structure, M exp. I will tell you later what is the prime model, but Alex has already mentioned it before, but I will recall you what, how does it look like? Now, the prime model is not yet the rest, maybe smaller than the residue structure. And now um, we want to embed the residue structure, not only the prime model. So uh, as for simplicity, we assume that uh, the minimal structure is saturated. So the residue structure is just R exp itself. So then uh, step two, we extend the embedding uh, to an embedding of R exp into the minimal structure. And to do this, we use an exp transcendence basis of R exp over the prime model. So Alex already said that the notion of, uh, there is a notion of exp algebraic closure. I will return to this later which defines a pre-geometry. It has Steinitz exchange principle. So it defines a dimension and the notion of transcendence basis, independent basis. So uh, you fix such a basis of, uh, so you fix many real numbers, uncountably many real numbers, which are exp, such that each of them is not exp algebraic over the others. Well, over QX really means over the empty set. Sorry, this is nothing. And then uh, uh, you use this transcendence basis to embed the elements of the transcendence basis into your minimal model and then uh, uh, extend the, 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 the previous embedding to the old uh, Rxp. Or if you, or if you prefer, if you don't like saturation, you just embed the residue field. The last, the last step is now you go to the restricted exponentiation. You rest, now you use the fact that uh, the reals with restricted exponentiation is polynomial to show that uh, Re is actually restricted exp is actually existentially close in the in, into the minimal model. So now I will elaborate, and this is uh, I will elaborate more now on this step one, step two, and step three in the in the next slides. Um, okay, um, as I said, what is missing would be to show that uh, in step three. If, if we could show that Re is an elementary substructure rather than just existentially closed, we would have settled the main conjecture that uh, definable completeness is an axiomatization modulo channel. So then uh, let me elaborate a bit more. Let me describe the prime model. This is given by the X algebraic numbers. An exponential polynomial is 
sorry, an expression of the form uh, polynomial in certain variables and the exponentials of those variables. So r equals zero is a misprint. So this is an exponential polynomial. You just take an ordinary polynomial and you replace some variables with some exp, exp of the other variables. So these are an exponential polynomials with coefficients in Q if the polynomial is over Q. Uh, a Kowalski system over Q is just, is just a system of N equations in N variables given by exponential polynomials equal to zero, right? This is N times N systems. And uh, our, a real number is exp algebraic if it is a coordinate of a non singular solution of a Kowalski system. So this has already been discussed by, by Alex. He said that it's not enough to consider functions on one variable, you have to consider systems of an n, uh, n equations and n variables, take a non singular solutions and uh, take the coordinates. And these are the exp algebraic numbers. Non-singular means that the Jacobian matrix of these GIs computed in the point is uh, different from zero. So around that point, you have uh, transversal intersections of uh, hypersurfaces given by these GIs. So the set of uh, exp algebraic numbers is the prime model of Tx. This is implicit in the work of, Z, of Wilkie, but uh, an, an, an explicit statement uh, can be found in the, in the paper of Jones and Wilkie in uh, 2008. So this is the prime model, just the, 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 the exp algebraic numbers. Now we want to embed the prime model into a nominimal uh, um, into the nominimal exp field. We assume channels. You take a non-singular solution of a Kowalski system, which is a tuple, a one a n. Now you, you fix a nominal uh, exp field or a definably complete exp field. And uh, you show that we show that there is a unique, uniqueness is important here, field embedding from the real closure of the field obtained by adding to the rational numbers your Kowalski solution together with the exponentials. And n is the minimal structure. So you can embed this just as a field, not as an exponential field. But then you require that uh, your uh, morphism phi respects the exponential, the, the, the exponential function, but only for x, not in the full field, but only on the linear span over Q of a one a n. So this is the main uh, lemma. The lemma uses essentially many, the, many of the ideas of Alex, namely the natural, uh, the natural thing to do would be to map the solution of a Kowalski system into a solution of the same Kowalski system in the minimal structure. However, before doing that, you replace your Kowalski system with a nicer Kowalski system with a technique which has been uh, described by Alex in his papers. In order to um, obtain a nicer Kowalski system such that the polynomials involved in the new Kowalski system have uh, the good transcendence degree over Q, namely transcendence degree N. This a priori may, may not be uh, true for the initial uh, uh, Kowalski system that you fix. So you need to do some uh, 
maneuver to change the Kovansky system into a better one. And then uh, once you have this better Kovansky system, you take your solution, you map it, you, you can show using a version of Newton's uh, theorem in the minimal structure, you can map it uh, into a nominal solution of the same Kovansky system. And then you can show that this defines a unique field embedding and which has this property. Now, once you manage to do this, taking the u using the, un the fact that this phi is unique, you can glue together all the possible phi's and taking the union of all the possible phi's, you get a unique embedding of uh, the full, uh, the prime model into M exp. And, and the, 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 the reason this works is that the, the prime model will be the union of uh, not only these real close fields, but also of these spans. Now the span here is included in general in the real close field, but when you take the union of everything, you get the same union and the union you get is exactly given by the prime model. Um, so this is, in this way, we have reached step one. So the prime model embeds in the, in the minimal structure. Now we want to extend the embedding to our exp. So we already know that we have embedded the prime model and, uh, uh, and by saturation, assuming saturation, the residue field is just uh, R X can be identified with R X. This is done just for notational simplicity. Otherwise I could just work with the residue field. Uh, okay, now I fix um, a finite tuple of exp independent elements of R. So a tuple of elements such that each one, each one is not in the exp algebraic closure of the others in the sense that I explained before. Oh, before, maybe I forgot to say, before I described the exp algebra, the exp algebraic closure of the empty set is given by the exp algebraic numbers. But if instead of taking, instead, if I consider polynomials with coefficients over a set, then I get the exp algebraic closure over that set, as mentioned by Alex already. And this, so this, this is a good dimension. This is a good independence property. So I, I can do this. So now, now I take another tuple given by a non-singular solution of a Kovansky system, but not over Q, but over Q, over Q together with this t's and their exponentials. And actually it's important here that uh, the coefficients here, this is a delicate point comes into the proof. It's important that the, the, the coefficients now are over the prime model qx, not over q, but over the prime model. So this, this is, we, we took some time to understand the exact form of this uh, uh, statement that I, I, I will give below. So I cannot take it's but I could have taken the closure of everything, including the T, but this would be bad. I could have taken Q rather than QX, but this would be bad. This is the four, this is exactly what I need. You first fix T's independent, they behave like independent variables essentially. And then I fix something X algebraic over the T's, over the T's and over QX. And then I consider this field. Now I want to map this stuff into the minimal structure. So I need to decide where to send the T's essentially. 
So what I do is just, I take an arbitrary element, arbitrary elements in the minimal structure whose standard part is T, no? an, an, an element tau i whose standard part is Ti. Um, just that. Then uh, using results of X or alternatively Kirby, which is a form of Shannell's conjecture, but for function fields rather than Shannell's conjecture. So Shannell's conjecture over T, which means Shannell's conjecture over some independent quantities. So it's a form of Shannell's conjecture over T. And this, using that, which is a theorem, is not a conjecture. Shannell's conjecture for function for in, in the form given by X is just a theorem. Using that, you can show a result very similar to the one that I said before, namely that there exists a unique field embedding phi from the real closure of uh, this big uh, stuff, the field generated by the t's, the a's, e to the t's, e to the a's with coefficients over the prime model. I can send everything into the minimal structure in a unique way, one, unique way depending on the choice of the taus. Everything depends on the choice of the taus. I send the t's, which are real numbers, to the taus, which are o-minimal with the same standard part. This phi, again, just is, it's just a field embedding, not an exponential field embedding. But then I require that phi preserves x, provided the, the in, provided that this x here is in the linear span over q, this time over q, not over qx, but over q, not over the prime model, but just over q. And this is, again, is important. Over q of the t's and the a's. So um, Alessandro, we have a question from Alex yes, on yes. the chat. He wants yes. to know, he says, are we assuming that Shanuel's conjecture holds in M? No, 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 we are not. Uh, yeah, I think we've answered that now. Uh, well, me? I I think this slide I posted that before I saw this slide. I think this slide probably explains why you don't need that. Is that correct? Well, I already used Shanwell to embed the prime model, so I'm implicitly using Shanwell because I'm already assuming that M X is ah uh, right. I already okay. used Shanwell in the, at, at the very beginning. So I already did the step one. Step one requires Shanwell. Yeah, so I mean, okay, I think I see. I, I'm just worried that M could have the fact in it that E to the E, for example, is some rational, say 25 well, over six or something, plus an infinitesimal. Um, well, uh, uh, well, of course- and that everything... can't happen, I guess, yeah. Um, well, first of all, a disclaimer, everything is work in progress, <laughs> there could be oh. mistakes, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and uh, we will double check, uh, but uh, I think the point is that uh, I'm considering standard Kovansky systems, Kovansky systems with uh, uh, coefficients coming from the, the reals, and uh, so um, if there were a failure, I, I, I guess that the, the idea would be that if there were a failure of uh, Shanwell in the minimal structure, taking the standard part map yeah. would get a failure in the reals. Yes, yes. Yeah, OK, fine. Sorry to bother you. Uh, I hope this is correct. Uh, yeah, but uh, of, of course, uh, everything needs to be checked carefully. But we are try, We are implicitly using uh, channels at the very beginning here. Uh, so now, um, so now we have this situation, and uh, um, uh, fixing now an exp. Trust, so everything now here depends on the choice of the taus. If I just want to embed this 
this is this part that I want to embed is just a subset of the reals. If I, if I just want to embed all the reals, I fix once and for all a transcendence basis of all the reals. And, and then uh, I take the union over all these files because these files are unique once you have fixed the tiles. And, and so you can take the union of those. And uh, of course, um, uh, and, and the union of all this stuff will be just R. The union of this span here would be just R itself. Um, so, so R itself will be the union of the real close fields that I mentioned, that I point out there, but also of this span there. Okay, of course, this is very much uses ideas of Alex to, to do all this, but it's, uh, I, I don't know if you state things exactly in this form. What I've seen is that you use channels to decide the exponential uh, uh, theory uh, uh, rather than embedding the QX, but maybe I miss uh, I missed some uh, some uh, some stuff. Yeah. That you, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, that you've done already. But anyway, um, so now um, so now we have this. So we have done step one and step two. So we have embedded our exp into the minimum structure, and then we are now on step three. Now you put yourself in the language with. Uh, restricted exp, namely the bell function given by this e, e to the one over one plus x square. And we want to prove that this is one is existentially closed, but now we have only, so, so the, we adapt the proof of Alex of the fact that uh, the theory of restricted exp is model complete, except that now instead of the complete theory, of restricted exp, we have just this theory of definably complete LE structures satisfying the differential equation for restricted exp. Okay, now the model completeness, now the natural conjecture would be that this sub theory is model complete, and then we would be done. We would have settled the main conjecture. We cannot really quite get that, but let me make a comment. So the model completeness of this theory amounts to show, it's equivalent to show that if you have two models, the small one is existentially close in the big one. So if you manage to do this for every pair of models, you would have proved the model completeness of the theory. We prove this, we can prove this, but only under this additional assumption that the small model is polynomially bounded. Uh, again, everything must be carefully checked. Uh, of course, a natural conjecture would be that any model of restricted exp, definably complete exp, restricted exp is indeed polynomial bounded, but so far we haven't proved it yet. We are working on it. Uh, however, RE, <laughs> is polynomially bounded by the Gabriel of low Yasevich van den Dries uh, theory of subanalytic sets. So for that particular model, for the restricted uh, real field, the proof works. And we can uh, then show that uh, um, this uh, RE is indeed uh, existentially closed. Uh, of course, it's model complete, so every formula is equivalent to an existential formula, but unfortunately, we don't know if the same holds in the minimal setting, right? Otherwise, we would have finished. So what is missing? Let me make some final remarks. So let me compare this with the work of uh, McIntyre and Wilkie. So uh, McIntyre and Wilkie proved that the global theory of exp is recursively axiomatizable modulo the existential theory, and the existential theory is decidable modulo Shannon's conjecture. Reasoning along similar lines, we show that 
The complete theory is, assuming Schoenel's conjecture, axiomatized by definable completeness plus a definable, a, a, a limited form of polynomial boundedness, which may be already follows from definable completeness, but we don't know. It's a limited form of polynomial boundedness, which has already, which has, which is called A7 in the paper of McIntyre and Wilkie, which essentially says that implicit functions of systems of restricted exponential polynomials are polynomially bounded. So it's a version because polynomially boundedness a priori is not a first order condition, but this is just a form of polynomially boundedness, which can be expressed in a first order way. And uh, if we assume that we get uh, this, uh, uh, this. Uh, and, uh, and again, I already said that uh, the difference of the two approaches like difference uh, is, is that we use channels, we use channel to embed the reals real exp into a nominal uh, model uh, while uh, uh, making Wilkie and Wilkie McIntyre uh, use channel to prove that the existential theory is uh, decidable, but the constructions and the ideas are uh, similar. Okay, so I have uh, essentially finished and uh, thank you for your uh, attention. Um, Thank you, Alessandro. Uh, we do have time for some questions or comments if anyone wants to make any. Do you want to make a comment, Lau? Oh, I'm just, um, just wondering. Oh, uh, yeah, I was wondering, um, you talk, when you mentioned Shadow's conjecture, this is just the 